Hello, my dear friends and associates. There was an earthquake, but never mind. This is the fourth Temple OS tutorial, indeed. It is not for the faint of heart. Um, natural disasters notwithstanding, um, I do believe that this will prove quite a challenge to the individual who has no experience with the Temple OS operating system. Temporal operating system, beware and uh, be discouraged, but not completely. For uh, I shall instruct you to the best of my ability. Frankly, I encourage you all to open your minds and drink the sweet nectars within. For you never truly know what you're capable of until you look inside and dig around. So let's begin with that. In the last video we imported our bitmaps but it's particularly laggy because we are simply viewing the bitmap in real time. It's being re-rendered on the screen every few minutes and so what we need to do is actually capture the screen and save it as a regular sprite. How do we do that? So this is really where we left off in the last video. You can see we have the BMP view on this cafe BMP image. And it's not doing anything too complex, it's just initializing and drawing the image to the screen. However, it is doing this every frame. So it is not very efficient. If we want to save the bitmap separately, there's a few di different things that we can do. But they all have to do with this BMP read function. So what exactly is this BMP read function? You can see it here in this file bmp.hc. This is BMP read. BMP read, all it does is it takes the BMP image and goes byte by byte, uh, depending on the width and height of the BMP, and it will plot, this, use this function grplot, the color value of the pixel to the appropriate position on the screen. We can modify BMP read if you'd like to maybe do rotations or croppings. You just need to modify these for loops. So to do that, you just press shift, hold shift down, and then press down, and you can highlight the whole thing, highlight the whole function, press control C, and then control V, and that'll paste it. And then you'll end up with something like this, BMP read, and you can rename it to whatever. If you're doing an X rotation, a Y rotation, this is going to flip it on the X and the Y axis because what I did here is I flipped the J's and the I's. You can do that or you can uh, set the negative values. You can modify these for loops to do different croppings, uh, rotations, whatever you need to do. But eventually, you'll end up with this. So in our BMP view, if we change this to our BMP read flip, and then run it, you can see the image is flipped. Here we are in a new script. We are going to press Control R to open our sprite menu, and we are going to make a new sprite. Now I wanted to go through some of these advanced features because I did not clearly explain them the first time around. So, of course we have the rectangle. We can make rectangles like this. What we're going to do is we need two menus. So keep this sprite window open and have a sep separate window. In this window, we're gonna render our BMP on the screen normally, how we did. So we're just going to include this BMP view. So there's that. Have a sep separate window. In this window, we're gonna render our BMP on the screen normally, how we did. So we're just going to include this BMP view. So there's that. We'll go to our other window here make it kind of smaller and I'll move it off to the side. So press Control R now and this will open your sprite menu. You want to click make sprite 
and then right click. This will bring you to the Sprite main menu and you want to select this option, Insert Screen Captured Bitmap. This will now give you the option to select the bitmap that we're rendering. So drag out a rectangle, just click the top corner here and drag it out to the bottom. And there you go. So we actually don't have to convert to a bitmap here because it's already a bitmap. So we can just set the origin go and then exit sprite and we can exit this we don't need that anymore and so that's how you screen capture your bright your bitmap and then you can use this like a regular sprite in your code you don't have to actually modify the raw bitmap anymore So I've just fast forwarded into the future and here you can see it's just a very simple script to display the sprite on the screen. It's nothing we haven't seen before. If you aren't sure what you're seeing here, go back to tutorial two and it'll sum it up for you. Quick peanut butter break. So press F5 and there you go. You're displaying the sprite on the screen. So very simple background like that is kind of boring. Why don't we try and make it more interesting? So let's add a new sprite, control R, and we're gonna make a sprite. And we're gonna actually make our first 3D sprite. So to create a 3D sprite, you just click this option right here, create or edit 3D mesh. And it gives you all the controls right here. And you might wanna write these down or just take a screenshot of it. I want to very quickly explain these controls because it might not be intuitive at first. So right mouse, hold and move to shift cursor Z. So we are viewing an object in a three dimensional space and we can shift our camera forward and backwards with the right mouse. Um, the other one that we really want is V. So V is very important. That's where we're going to be able to edit our vertexes. The vertexes are specific points in our 3D model, which we're going to uh, draw triangles between. T is your triangle mode, and N is the polygon mode, but you mostly want to compose with triangles, and you mostly want to compose triangles that are facing out. So what that means is uh, a triangle has two sides, so it has a front-facing side and a back-facing side. To make sure that your triangles are always facing outward the way that you want them to face, uh, you want to go in the same order. So if it, when you're typing, if you can think about it, you have a vertex, a vertex, and a vertex. You're moving in clockwise. Similarly, so you want to do that for your entire project. If you decide you're going to go clockwise, you can also go counterclockwise, but then you have to do the entire thing counterclockwise. So what that means is bottom, right, and then left. So that makes a triangle counterclockwise. That's pretty much all you need to know. The other important thing to know is that you can't actually delete uh, large selections. It's kind of difficult to do. So always try and make sure that you're saving often, making copies of your sprite so that if you do make a mistake and you have to go back, you don't have to undo too much work. But we can press OK and this is the menu here. So I'm gonna make a very basic 3D object. You can kind of see, maybe you can't see it in the video, but there's a little dot where it's going to be placed. So just try your best to make it line up uh, how you want it to be. So I'll do, I'll just do a tall rectangle. How about that? Make it tall. And if you mess up and you place it in the wrong place, you can go up here and you can do uh, delete last. Um, you can also do uh, move vertex. So if you want to actually, if you want to select this menu, you just uh, press the, uh, it's the Windows key or the function key, I guess. So uh, you can do move vertex or M. You can see actually I accidentally put one up here. So you just delete that. And this is what I was talking about with the triangles now. So we want to press T to go to triangle mode and then we just select our vertices. 
like I said, clockwise. So that's our front f uh, face of our rectangle. Now to select everything, I'm going to go to Place Vertex. That's going to make sure I'm in Vertex mode, and then I want to select all. So now I have all the vertices selected. I can do Control C and Control V. Now I'm going to just change the angle that I'm viewing this at from. Let's go from this side. You see I accidentally put a vertex over there. Don't uh, unselect anything just yet. We're going to move everything. So to do that, we are going to do move vertex Z. And you can, it'll actually play a sound if you're uh, on a uh, hardware or virtual machine. So you can kind of gauge how far you're actually moving it. I'll put it like right there. So now we have a copy. And now we can just close our, let me get rid of these random uh, vertices. Okay. And so now I'm just going to close up these sides. And let's say you want a different color too. The option is right up here to color. You can also change the snap. Uh, of the vertices if you want to do it more fine. This is what I was talking about with the double and single sided. For the most part, you're only going to want to use the single sided colors. Double side means that each side has different colors, but for the most part with your triangles, there should only be one side ever facing the camera unless you're doing something really bizarre. Um, but I'll do green. So that should be our little rectangle, yep. Okay, so when we're done, we just press escape and exit sprite. So here we can see our 3D object that we made. The last thing we need to do is just add this sprite3yb function. There's actually three different variations of this sprite right function you can see it's 3y there's also 3x and 3z these just describe the type of rotation and this is the angle of rotation I'm passing in TS which just stands for seconds that have passed since the operating system run it's just a time variable so it'll rotate when I press F5 here we can see it's just rotating and then it rotates back the other way. I think my sprite is a little messed up because I messed up the triangles, but you get the idea. That's how you do it. Now we're thinking with our brains. Thank you for watching.